In this video, we explore some of the best fishing spots around Gispon. We will start off with the Mahia Peninsula, which is about 60 kilometers to the west of Gispon, and it's still in Hawke's Bay. Then we travel to Gisborne and check out some of the local fishing spots there. And along the way we also check out the longest fishing wharf in New Zealand at Tolaga Bay. And as usual we, we do a mix of fishing, some land-based fishing such as surf casting and rock fishing. And we also do a little bit of kayak fishing and uh, yeah, a little bit of drone fishing as well. If you like the video don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. So I'm currently on my way to the Mahia Peninsula in Hawke's Bay to do some kayak fishing and I thought I'd take this opportunity and show you guys some of the best fishing spots at the Mahia Peninsula. It's a really good uh, fishing destination here in Hawke's Bay, popular place. Let's have a look what it's like here. Now our first fishing spot here is Black's Beach and this is probably my favorite fishing spot here at the Mahia Peninsula. A really good beach for surf casting because you get some deep water in casting range. I caught a couple of snapper here, some kawai. I also hooked into a huge stingray and managed to land this one. Unfortunately, didn't get this on video. Pretty cool looking surf casting beach, that one. Have a nice, beautiful sunset. A big kawaii. Oh, nice sunrise. I'm not really an early morning person, so I don't get to see sunrises that often. But if I manage to get drag myself out of bed really early, then it's always nice to see them. An essential bit of kayak fishing equipment, uh, sunscreen. It's a really cool rock wall here and a bit of a stream mouth there for launching a kayak. And over there is the Mahia Peninsula. So here's like a launching area. Yeah, well, it looks like I can drive down here and launch the kayak quite easily. It's very shallow here at the launch point though. Well, it's still pretty shallow, it's low tide now. Incoming tide, so I'm gonna have to drag my kayak out here to that entrance. So many cray pots, I don't know if you can see them on the camera, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve at least here. And it looks like they have just been freshly baited because I've seen the boat, prey boat leaving. I don't know if it's a commercial operation or what those pots are, but yeah, looks like good area for crayfish here. Now I'm going to the last prey pot. So I'm guessing that's where the reef ends and then the water will drop down from there. And yeah, we should be over some nice clean bottom to fish it. Right, 
first fish of the day. Just starting to throw a little micro jig. I think it's, I think it's a trevally. Nope, not a trevally. It's a cowboy. All right. Our third fishing spot is Mahanga Beach. This is a great beach for surf casting and drone fishing. If you have a four wheel drive, you can also launch a boat here on a calm day. Another quick kayak session this morning. Check out this place. Get out there before the wind picks up this morning. Straight out, and do a bit of fishing. See if we can get anything. We definitely got a bunch of kawai in this area. Another pretty decent kawai around here. I was fishing just a few hundred meters away from the beach. Nice little feisty snapper. First time I've been fishing with this micro jig here. Sort of in pink color with dots on it. I think that's made by Shimano and it seems to be doing the damage as well. Even got a tiny blue cut here. Whee. Okay, I hope they do something pretty decent. Huh? It is heavy. Oh, look at that. He took the Shimano microchip. Oh, he's heavy. Nah, it's a Trevally, even better. Whoa, that's a beauty. Oh God, I don't want to lose him without a landing net. Oh, check that out. What a nice Trevally. Ooh, and that tiny little micro jig. That's what they like. The next day we wanted to try a bit of drone fishing here. Because the beach is so shallow and tidal, surf casting is probably only good late in the evening or early in the morning when it's still dark, otherwise fish probably won't come into the shallow water. Now with the drone we can cast a little bit further, about 400 meters, and uh, that would also work during the day. We didn't have any luck though and it was getting very warm very quickly so we only had one cast and then gave up. Our next fishing spot is called Snapper Rock and this is the most popular fishing spot at the Mahia Peninsula. Especially if you want to target kingfish with live baits under float for example. Stick baiting could also be a great option here. It's a very accessible rock fishing spot because you can essentially park right next to it. This over there is the Snapper Rocks. I fished there off the rock the other day, but today I thought I'd try something different and drag my kayak down here and just uh, paddle around there. I've never kayaked here before, so I hope that isn't a bad idea. There's a boat ramp over there, it'd be much easier to launch the kayak, but I thought why not drive down here so I'd be closer to the fishing spot. I don't have to paddle so far, but it's high tide and there's so many rocks here, so I'm hoping that when the tide goes out later I'll be able to get back, but it should be alright. 
So I've been drifting around here for a little while trying to find some fish and uh, the first snapper is on. Small one again, just lots of small ones around these days. He took the micro jig, so well, we're all packed up. Fishing wasn't that great here, only a couple small snapper. Beautiful spot though. Seen some guys going out for a dive here. Definitely a good spot for diving as well, but at the moment the water isn't clear either, so yeah. But that's snapper rocks for you. Let's have a look at the boat ramp where you can launch your kayaks and boats more easily. All right, so that's the boat launching area here at the eastern side of the Mahia Peninsula. And uh, it's pretty neat actually. It's a ton of parking here and very sheltered to launch boats. Uh, there's not really any bar crossing or anything out there, so... There are actually two ramps. There's one launching area a little bit further up the river and one uh, further down there by the mouth. So plenty of options to launch boats here when it's busy. After snapper rocks on the way back I had a quick look at the Oraka Lagoon, which is also a pretty popular fishing spot. There were a few people surf casting at the mouth of the lagoon, I suspect for Kawai mainly. This is also a great place if you would like to spear a few flounder. If you have a self-contained vehicle, you can even camp here for free, which makes this a pretty good spot for fishing and camping. Alright, so that was Mahia and now we're off to Gisborne. Our first fishing spot is the Waipaua river mouth at the end of Midway Beach. This is probably the most popular land-based fishing spot in Gisborne. We have seen the most fishers there and we have also seen some catching a few kawai. It's good access if you've got a four-wheel drive, you can fish right from your car. We didn't have much luck catching kawai, but instead we caught a lot of yellow-eyed mullet. That's a mullet. Oh, that's a pretty good place to catch some bait. <laughs> Another little mullet here. And uh, yeah. We're just gonna mullet, mullet on mullet. Oh. So I'm gonna. If we don't catch anything bigger, I'm pretty happy with that as well because we can keep a few mullets for bait, and I'm gonna salt them later. Uh, yeah, they make actually really good bait mullets. All right, Fisher. So I came out to a place uh, about 20 kilometers uh, east of Gisborne. Uh, it's, it's a, there's a boat ramp right here, Tatapuri, I think it's called. And I've uh, been staring at the water for quite a little while because uh, it's pretty swelly here. There's some huge swells coming in and uh, I wasn't sure if I should go out or not on a kayak, you know. Uh, first time I've been here and uh, I'm on my own and, you know can be a little bit dangerous with those swells, I don't really want to roll over here. But uh, some big, big ass rollers coming in here. Wow man, Ooh, check this out. So, getting back with those is to the boat ramp might not be so easy. So I'm just going to cruise around here a little bit and try my luck and hopefully nothing will happen and I can get back fairly safe. Wish me luck. Oh, that was pretty, pretty nasty out there, pretty rough, not suitable for kayaking I think at all. Here's the boat ramp over there, Katapuri, within that short half an hour or what I was out there, the tides already come back in and that's probably also creating bigger waves, the incoming tide. 
I'm just happy I made it back here without uh, tipping over and losing all my gear, possibly. These guys over there, they're doing a tour, like a stingray petting tour, uh, run by a company here, Dive Tatapuri, and they got some tame stingrays. I think at the moment it's a school group there, and you can walk out with the guides and they'll feed the stingrays and they come right up and you can pet them. It's, you know, one of the uh, attractions here in this area. If you're here in the boat ramp, uh, it doesn't even look like there's so much swell. It's only once you get out past the reef that these huge uh, rollers come through there. And man, yeah. Ooh. Didn't even get to use my all my nice lures today. Now this fishing spot here is the Tolaga Bay Wharf and this is the longest fishing wharf in New Zealand. It's a really cool wharf and I've been wanting to fish here for a long time. I've driven past it quite a few times but I never managed to actually fish here so I just wanted to check that out because this is a wharf fisherman's dream this wharf. Water is around about five to eight meters deep there, depending on the tide. This is the longest wharf we have in New Zealand. It's called Tolaga Bay Wharf, and it's a huge huge walk. It's morning, like I think it's seven o'clock now and yeah, we're gonna head out there. I got a bit of burly and salted baits and uh, we're gonna head out there and do a bit of fishing today. Yeah, so basically this wharf was built before they had all the roads here and it was been, has been used for shipping and then once they started building the roads for logging and all this, uh, the wharf, you know, became disused like many wharfs. I should be low tide soon and then it will be incoming tide, which is usually the best time incoming. Guys, behind us they just caught a nice snapper, but bloody, bloody nothing happening for us here, except all these bait fish. with this guy I'm gonna chuck him on the other rod there and uh, could use him as fresh bait there we go nice fresh one hopefully he stays on the hook Oh yeah. Apple Oh wow man. That's free. <laughs> dented bird. Oh nice. There's only a one pile on. Really big ones as well, eh? Oh, sorting them out, yeah. 
heaps down there though, bro. Heaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll fill your pocket, I'll fill your bag up, whatever you want. Oh bro. man, look at that. That's really good. nice. Really nice size, eh? Oh man, thanks. Yeah, I'll take, uh, don't take some, eh? Maybe bro, five, eh? That's enough for me. Up. Yeah, are you sure? Up, yeah, I'm positive. All right, well, I'll, I'll grab another handful then. <laughs> I'll be, uh, I'll make some nice lunch, man. Are nah, you also great? I'm gonna oh. have myself. Front of some more breakfast. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. muscles, eh? Huh? <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you. <laughs> Right guys, so we came out to Anarua Bay, which is a really cool spot for camping and fishing. There's a really cool dock campsite here. It's on the East Cape, about 50 something kilometers from Gisborne. And I was really looking forward to coming here to do a bit of fishing, because last time I've been here, about three years ago, we caught some really good fish with a drone, and I wanted to do a bit more drone fishing, kayak fishing, um, and maybe some diving, but arriving at the spot, now there's a rahui in place. So now in New Zealand, a rahui is often imposed in different areas by the locals. Um, and they put a rahui in places to protect certain areas, uh, like this one, from overfishing. And this is probably a very popular spot in summer, and there are lots of crayfish here and so on. So they put this rahui out here so you can't collect shellfish and crayfish, and you're not allowed to use contikis or drones, but you can still fish with rod and reel so basically surf casting uh, really i thought i can take my kayak but someone told me yeah, you can't even fish from boats here you have to go way out with a boat to be able to fish it doesn't say that here but you know that's that's the rule i kind of support rahuis uh, to be honest because it protects the environment and uh, we should have more marine reserves and if the officials don't put out more, mar more marine reserves then it's all good for the locals, you know, to protect the environment. But yeah, so, you know, that's that's how it goes. I wish I had known that there's a Rahui, then I wouldn't have driven all the way out here to do some fishing. We're still gonna do a bit of surf casting. A little bit of an impact sinker. I always uh, see basic fishing. The other YouTube channel that I like to watch in New Zealand is using impact sinkers and I couldn't find an impact sinker uh, so I just made one myself. I'm just gonna make another video soon on how I made it. It's pretty easy. So. Alright. Super Mario in the boat. <laughs> For camping and fishing, the dock campsite is just behind the beach basically. Uh, we didn't have much luck fishing here or surf casting. I only caught a few small carvai which I released uh, after dark, but that was pretty much it. Now our last fishing spot in this video is Tokumaru Bay. It's just a few kilometers past Anarua Bay. There's also a nice long fishing wharf that we wanted to check out.
So after not being able to fish in Anarua Bay, well at least not with a kayak and uh, a bit of unsuccessful fishing with a surf caster except two small kawai, and also not being able to catch anything at Tolaga uh, Bay Wharf, at the longest wharf, today we decided to come out and have a look at Tokumaru Bay. There's another wharf here, but um, unfortunately that's closed as well. Uh, I suppose it's too broken, so there's a temporary closure there. And there is also a rahui, so no diving for, you know, crayfish or anything around here at the moment either. Not much we can do. Uh, the water looks really milky as well. We got the drone in the car, so we might just uh, do a bit of drone fishing here. Guys, so that's the end of our video. We really enjoyed exploring this area. I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the video, of course, and visit us at fishingreminder.com for the best fishing times, as always. We'll see you in the next video.